Hello, welcome to StereoPixel. In this tutorial, we're going to start the discussing on the particle systems in 3ds Max. If you are newer into the uh, 3ds Max particle systems, then I hope this will be very helpful to you. So, where we can actually get the particle system? Now, under the uh, Create menu on the Geometry options, if you put on the drop down menu under the uh, where the standard primitives and extended primitives are there, just under the compound objects, you can get the particle systems. So, how the particle system works? Now, the first particle system that is there is the PF source. Now, this is a very kind of an advanced particle system in 3ds Max. So, in, in this lecture, we are not going to cover up this one. We'll start with a very simple particle system that is called spray. In this lecture, we are covering the spray and different different parameters of the spray and how we can manipulate them for creating the uh, particle systems. So just click on the spray and click and drag on the viewport. And immediately you can see there is a small rectangular shape uh, created with a, uh, with, a, with a small line uh, just in center of that particular, you know, uh, this uh, rectangle. Now this is an emitter from which the particles will emit. Now in spray, in case of spray, if you if you just play the animation from your timeline, you will see the particles are started emitting. And this is a very very basic uh, pattern of the particles in 3ds Max and very easy to create some effects. So, if by selecting this particle system, this spray particle system, if you go to the modify panel, you see there's a bunch of anim uh, bunch of parameters are out there, but they are very limited. And as this is a very basic one, this uh, this limited pa uh, parameters are out there. So let's see where uh, we can actually, you know, how we can manipulate the spray parameters and how we can actually get something out of it. So first of all, uh, I'll show you from the bottom. Which is a last option, which is a size of the emitter. Now, generally, people, what us, I mean, the new people are, are some people start with the starting uh, with this uh, spray or the particle system is in, in 3ds Max, they don't use this emitter, uh, the size of the emitter. They generally use the scaling system of Max. Now, scaling and the size of the emitters are not both same. That I'm uh, for for sure that uh, you, you will also you know try to understand that uh, how this scaling and this uh, emitter size of the emitter will actually work now let me let me show you the first of all if you want to decrease the size of the emitter you should please actually decrease it from here that's the best way now why this is the best way because if you're scaling it down let's see what is going on you're actually having a different uh, range of particle which is happening or which is covering the area whereas if you are increasing the size it is not going to increase the size of the particles or maybe uh, the other uh, you know parameters of the particles so it will be advisable that you should not use the scale tool uh, for manipulating the size of the particle uh, sorry the emitter so uh, so that is the emitter size which is really really important now we can start with the first parameter of the particles now as we can see that there is no uh, controlling over here so i just uh, uh, put it in the in between of the animation and i'm just going to show you the uh, rest of the parameters so the first parameter is the viewport count and that second one is the ren render count now what is the viewport count and the render count is viewport count and the render counts actually divided into two different parameters because of that if you want a different amount of uh, particles in your viewport and exactly a different amount of particles in your render count now if you don't have this option what will happen you have to put a single amount which will be in your inside if your viewport or the scene and also same will be come out in the render now sometimes if you are getting a large amount of particles that your system can be slow down you know this is a very basic skin scene there is no particles at all uh, i mean no objects at all or no object interaction with the particles or deflection is happening so 
in this case there is nothing uh, no, not a big problem but if you are having a large amount of scene with a lot of objects and the particles are interacting with each other then definitely it will be a problem now if right now if we render the scene and you can see the almost same amount of particle has been seen whereas i can easily increase the number of uh, you know particle object in the render but still my uh, you know viewport count as my view viewport count is quite low uh, it can be a very useful while accessing the entire scene now you can see the huge number of particles are out there now if i use the same amount of uh, particle in scene it will be definitely going to slow you out, slow down your you know calculation or manipulation of the uh, viewport as a, or if you are using a very uh, great amount of huge scene so that is the first thing about the uh, parameters of the uh, render i mean render count and the viewport count then we come to the drop size of this one uh, the for the spray we can easily use it for the use of uh, you know effects of creating effect of rain and something on a very large scene so the drop size are really really important if you hit render you can see the drop size are out there and by the name i can um, actually can understand if I increase the drop size the render output also should reflect the same thing so this is a very pretty straightforward on the drop side and now the next one is a very important one which is the speed now if you decrease the speed you can see there is a there is a very serious amount of decrease of the size also because you can understand that the as this is a spray this is not actually the rain kind of a thing though it's though it's actually looks like rain but it's actually a spray so the speed is really really important so if you increase the speed a lot like uh, maybe 20 or something then you can see the size of your you know uh, the objects are also getting affected or particles are uh, uh, particles are getting affected so the speed is really really important and also same as the speed uh, the variation of the speed is also very important now why this variation is actually variation of the speed in 3ds max everywhere you found a variation is the variation of exactly the adjacent parameter that means if you are having a, a, a variation of drop size then it just under the drop size then is the variation of the drop size as it is the variation as it is just under the speed so it is a variation of the speed now in spray if i am actually varying the speed of different uh, you know uh, the particles then what will happen it is it will actually get spread out and now if you you know uh, hit play the animation button now you can see it so we can having a very drizzle kind of a look so we can actually create the drizzle of uh, rain you know um, by varying the speed of different different particles so this is also some kind of a uh, uh, very useful sometimes to create that that kind of an effect so now after that it's a very pretty and simple one that's a drops dots and takes now these are absolutely for the viewport there is no connection with the render now sometimes uh, we want it uh, uh, like distinguish two three different kind of particles there you can uh, select uh, the type of uh, display display type of that particle inside of the viewport now as you can see that this one is actually you know depends on the particle of the viewports whereas this particular two option you can see there is an option called segregated as a render option and these two options are actually uh, influence the render output so right now the basic one is the tetrahedron um, uh, output of as a display so these are actually the tetrahedron and if you want to change it to the facing you can change it to the facing now facings are really really important though i'm not going to you know include the discussion of the facing how to use the facing and all or in this particular uh, lecture but i will definitely uh, tell you in the in the coming coming series of the same so <clears throat> sorry coming uh, videos of the same series so these are something like that if you have an idea of the alpha channel based uh, opacity maps you can use the opacity map and create, create different kind of an object uh, or different kind of uh, designs of particles over here by using using them through your your, your material editor so that is the tetrahedron facing the next option is really really interesting one which is which actually 
uh, will give you a control of uh, you know creating the pam particles in your scene so if you hit play animation you can see that immediately the particles are getting emitted from your you know uh, from from your emit, uh, emitter but uh, it might happen that uh, you don't want them to be emitted from the first frame itself as this timing section is actually all about this uh, this how you are actually controlling and when to start the animation by the name you can understand it as my start value is zero it is actually start emitting the particles from the zero uh, parameter sorry zero frame so now if i want something uh from 50 i i will see that if you hit play animation button uh still 50 there is no animation of the particles and after 50 the particles has been starting animated or maybe started emitted so this is all about the uh, the emitting of the particles which frame from which frame you want to create this uh, spray animation as uh, so a spray particle to be emitted from its emitter next one I make it a start point as a 10 next one is a life that means after emitting you can see if I see in the full view if you these particles are actually emitted and also getting die after certain frames now these things can be controlled by this life option the life here is say 30 that means after emission of emission after emitting from certain frame how many frames those particles will be leave that means if my start frame is 10 and my particles life is 30 that means the the particle that has been emitted on 10th frame it will be die on 40th frame so let's see if we see the first frame just uh, try to follow this particular particles over here and you can see the first disappearance happening after c after 40 those are getting died till 40 there is no change but after 40 it's gone so each and every frame uh, sorry each and every particles which is uh, starting uh, its life cycle from 10th frame it will die on the 40th frame if it is starting from start it's at uh, the, the particle which has been started from 20th frame it will definitely die on the 50th frame so like this thing to, uh, will happen so you can change the uh, life rate also the emitter height and width these are already actually you know uh, the I have already covered oh yeah one more thing there is a uh, uh, birth rate is also there now if as I am I have already switched on the or the by default also it has been switched on the cons constant the constant rate will be you know created but you can control the birth rate also right now the birth rate means each and every frame how many frame uh, sorry how many particles will be emitted on particular a single frame that means if I okay so now from first frame it will though it uh, from the 10th frame it has been started so an 11th i should get the 10 particles over here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so now on the second frame i should have been get 20. you can see the 20s are one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20 uh, particle has been created. So in in the same way, the uh, as the the number of uh, frames will you know move on, it will be you know it will started on the on the same. So now after after the after you know birthing on the same rate, each, the birth rate will also be you know after uh, maintaining that birth rate. If my number of uh, count has been completed that means um, every frame 10 particle is actually emitting so how many frames it will take to rend I mean to emit 100 frames that is 10 that means a 10 frame is required to emit the 100 frames I uh, sorry 100 particles by rate of a 10 10 into 10 is 100 that's it so it will start from 10 and it will end at 20 after 20 there is no emission is happening so i don't want that i want my constant uh, birth rate it should 
you know continue the birth uh, of the particles so that's why you can put it in the constant mode or by default it has been in the constant mode so this is all about the spray uh, you know um, uh, spray particle which is uh, really really you know sometime is um, really uh, helpful to you know create the uh, create a sort of a, a I mean, look of a rainy kind of, or you know, drizzling out, out out there inside of a scene, and you can create them uh, easily by you know choosing some colors into it and by getting the render out of it. So that is all about the spray uh, spray particle in 3s Max. Hope you enjoy this. Please uh, subscribe to your YouTube channel to stay updated about the series also and other tutorials, and also follow us on. Twitter and uh, like our Facebook page. Thank you very much.